and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. So we're going to talk about five foam roller exercises we would never do. That doesn't mean you can't do them, but we, you know, if you listen to us, you shouldn't do them. Well, like you know, to your mom. there's a better chance you're going to live healthier, feel better. And not get injured. There you go. By the way, if you are new to our channel, mm -hmm. please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, join us on our social media channels, Facebook. We got Bob and Brad. We're always giving away something. So if you go to, it's pinned to the top of our Facebook page, or if you go to bobandbrad.com, go to our giveaway section. This week, we're giving away the Ergonomics Innovation Donut Pillow or Donut Cushion. This is for people who have coccyx pain or right. sits bone pain, or right. if you have a bony butt, or you just want to have a com more comfortable sit. We've so. got someone here at work. She just uses it every day because she's more comfortable yeah, at the desk. More comfortable in there you go. Period. We're going to go over these fairly quickly. We don't need to spend a lot of time. The first one that we recommend that you don't foam roll is your back, your low back. Your mid back, we think it's great for. Right. So, by if you want to turn around, Brad, so your mid back runs from about here to right below the shoulder, a little bit below the shoulder blades here. That's that's the mid back. That's fine to foam roll that. You don't want to foam roll in this area because number one reason is when you foam roll, you're jamming all the joints together here. The right. Way you're, so the, that the back is normally arched that way, so you're jamming the facets the joints together right. and it's just not a comfortable thing it's right. not a good thing mm -hmm. so should i do it once brad just yeah. to show you which one are you going to pick out bob well, give me a soft one because mm. uh well okay we got the ultra soft and i will go with the medium soft yeah this is probably one of the most popular ones that gets sold on our site here right um, and i think they're in our amazon affiliates page sure down below it's my favorite it's, one again mid back yes fantastic i sure. do it every morning but getting down into this part here, ooh, I just don't like that. And it's jamming the joints together. And it's just not good for the yeah. back. Yeah, this is one of those things you got to listen to your body. Sometimes with a roll foam roller, it's good to have some pain with it, but not in the low back. No, I actually, and I want to, people should thank me for making the sacrifice and doing that. Right. As a demonstration. Well, I'm sure there will be many comments yeah. on that, Bob. <laughs> All right. Next one, the point of the hip. What do I call the point of the hip? If you look right here, this is the hip bone. And right here on the point, the reason I don't like to foam roll over there, there's a bursa there. Right. If you keep foam rolling over that bursa, which is a fluid-filled sac, this has got a, she's got, okay, she just looked like Ooh. she was mad at me. There's a bursa, which is a fluid-filled sac there, helps the tendons run over the bone. Mm -hmm. And uh, you keep irritating that, and you could flare it up. So that you can feel that right there on your side. It was below the belt. And it's a bony part, and... Now, you can go below that, right. just right below it, but just don't go over the hip itself. So we can do that IT band we talked about. We've had videos on that. But when you get up into here, uh, you're going, I'm going right over that bone right now. Particularly if you have the black roll, those are a little more dense. Uh, it's even more aggressive on that. Or if you had this one. Oh, Oops, the, oh the, the, yeah, the knobber here. Yeah. This one, this one's pretty aggressive. It's good for the hamstrings, you know, upper back perhaps. And the I even like it on the hip flexors. Oh, you do? Yeah, I like to get aggressive on my hip flexors. I bet you do, Bob. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what does he mean by that? <laughs> Let's go on. All right. Next one. Um, I would not, for the same reason I wouldn't do the low back, I wouldn't do the neck either. The same, right. for the same reasoning. Your back has a normal arch in here like sure. this. Sure. And so the, the, you're going to jam the facets together. It's just not doing any, any good to yeah, back back off on the low back. I don't and think I neck. have to demonstrate that, do I, Brad? I nope. can just yeah, show, we I'm don't. Gonna show like if I was on here. I'm going to hit my mic anyway, so that's sure. why I don't want to show yeah. it. But it, it's going to jam all the facets, the joints together. Not good for you. And the next one is just like the hip. Sam, I am. Sam, I am. So th there's a point of the shoulder, too which is uh, also not going to be comfortable because there's not a lot of muscle over that area. If we get right to the point here, um, and you can irritate the tendon there, and there's bursas there too, right. all, all around oh, yeah. there. It's a tender area. Yeah, so you could uh, irritate that. So you don't want to foam roll right over the point of the shoulder. Maybe yeah. that's very obvious to people, but I, I don't know what people know and what they don't know, Brad. Well, we get questions on these in our comments, and uh, so these can clarify that up. The last two, I'm gonna. We, I mentioned five, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you a two and one. Uh, one is the four, and this is just because 
how difficult it is to do. Uh, you know, a lot of times it, it's really good for you to massage the forearms mm-hmm. because especially if you're having some uh, overuse syndrome sure. uh, in the forearm or if you're if you type a lot or if you even even if you carpal tunnel, I think it's good to uh, massage sure. this area. Mm-hmm. It's just awkward to use a foam roller. I mean, I don't know what you do is like this. It's just well, you know. Oh, I just took my bandage off my thumb. Darn it! You can go like this on the back side and the front. It is a little awkward. You can do it. It's just. Uh, I just think is a better mm. alternative, Brad, is to use a massage stick. Yeah, uh, you're or, right. Uh, I mean, these these are made for this type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, this really gets in there. It really rolls it out. And and I. The next one I'm going to mention is the same way down the the hip adductors, the inner thigh. Yep. Just really awkward to try to get in that position. It is with this uh, big yeah. roller. But you can take the fo- uh, the this roller stick here, and you can really get into that inner thigh. And yep. I've been actually using this because I've been sore on my inner thighs. I'm not sure why. I think for the forearms and the adductor, the groin muscles, this really. Yeah, that that works fantastic. Yeah, the pure wave is really a ticket. Right. But, but we're not doing that now. Yeah, we're not mentioning that right Sorry. now. So, but we're just we're going to be doing the foam rollers, basically. So, I don't know. Were there any other areas that you're concerned about, Brad? I mean, I wouldn't do it over the heels, I guess, but there's no reason why you would. Right. I we're mean, just talking know. about what not to do it on. Right. Right. Not right. what to. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. All right. I promise that we're going to make this short, Brad. So, thanks for watching.